you'll hear lots of things on the internet about how long it takes to create a habit. There are all sorts of theories around doing something consistently for X number of days, X number of weeks, whatever, whatever, whatever will create a habit for you. Really, what you're going to discover is that when you do something consistently for you, whatever that means, and then you don't do the thing, you'll know you've created a habit when you really miss the thing that you haven't done. So that happened to me yesterday. I wasn't able to go for my morning walk because it was pouring with rain and I didn't realize that I had come to, I guess, rely on these morning walks to start my day off on the right foot. So I've been having 6 a.m. meetings for a couple of months now and they're going really well and I'm loving doing them. Some mornings I have to really drag my sorry butt out of bed. But what I've started doing now that the sun's coming up a little earlier is actually going out on my walk. And so talking and walking at the same time works really well for me. Couldn't go walking yesterday, really noticed it. Yesterday was cactus completely ruined my my energy for the day. It didn't ruin my day, but it ruined my energy for the day. And so on reflection, I realized, you know what? I've come to rely on this morning routine. I've come to rely on not only my 6 a.m. meetings, which are actually really about accountability for progress towards my own goals, but I've come to rely on this getting out in the world, fresh air, exercise, feeling good about myself, endorphins, all that good stuff, right? And so then this morning when my alarm went off, it was really tempting to just roll over and not get out of bed because I hadn't gone for my walk yesterday. It was easy. It was, it was like a siren call. To just, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. I didn't go yesterday. It won't hurt if I don't go today. But I got up anyway, went for my walk. Stunning sunrise. If you're following my stories, you'll see this stunning sunrise. Now, what does this have to do with you? Well, here's a bit of a lesson for me that I think might have some relevance to how you're finding a way to build balance in your life business and home life. So as you know, I run two businesses. I have a private psychology slash mental health clinic that provides services uh, around quite a lot of Tasmania to clients needing mental health support. I have a team of professionals who provide those services directly to clients. I have a team of admin staff who make all of the machinery function. And then I'm the CEO. I sort of pop in and pop out and am at you know the end of the phone if I'm not physically in the building. I also have a mentoring business where I support business owners, private practice owners, people thinking about starting their own business or their own private practice to really overcome some of the psychological barriers, some of the sense of isolation, some of the stress, some of the confidence that can be lacking, some of the self-doubt. Now, I'm a busy person. I run those two businesses. I'm pretty proud of the success we've had. I'm pretty proud of the flexibility that I've managed to build into running those two businesses. I know a lot of business owners are drawn to owning their own business because of this promise of freedom and flexibility. It's taken me 10 years to get this level of freedom and flexibility. So it's a long game that you're playing when you start playing this one. What you might not know is that recently my family has decided to, we have decided to embark upon home education for our kids. So this has been a very long drawn out decision. I have one child with specific learning needs and another, another kid who was not interested in home education at all until he had a sick day and saw what kinds of things we were doing and what home education actually means. And now he's in like Flynn. So today's a really great example of how 
my need to build structure into my day and into my week supports the flexibility that I also want to have to be able to be flexible with my businesses, flexible with my family and flexible enough to provide home education for my kids. How do I do it? Well, this is where the whole thing about not going for my morning walk yesterday reinforces my my realization, my learning about myself that this structure, this routine is becoming necessary for me to have the energy I need for my day to be able to juggle all the balls that I juggle and I know that you juggle a lot of balls as well you've got a lot of things right you've got your family you've got your business you've got your bills you've got your own needs your own health your own wellness we're all juggling a lot of balls so for me it's been a real drama to get myself to a point where I will embrace structure because I actually prefer to be really spontaneous but it's working for me to have adopted some level of structure, some level of organization in my diary for my, for my days of the week. So I have specific days where I do certain things now. And also within my day, I'm now tweaking it so that I've got time to do all the things that I do. And it does start for me with this getting up early, having my morning meeting, having my morning walk. That not only gets my energy in the right place for the day, but it also means I'm starting my day. I'm starting my business day about 7am. And and I've done with the bulk of my business day, usually by about lunchtime at the latest. With the kids, we do a couple of hours of book work each day. And that's the formal side of education afternoons are for the informal learning that comes through activities. So today we took off up to the mound of uh, the top of Mount Wellington, Kunanyi, and played in the snow. So we had enough freedom and a flexibility because I've built this structure into my days and into my weeks. We've now got enough freedom and flexibility to be spontaneous, which is my heart's desire. Spontaneous enough to just bugger off up the top of a mountain and build a snowman. For them, we were able to build in a little bit of botany, a little bit of geography, a little bit of physical activity and make it a real educational experience. For me, it was drawing on my inner little girl whose photo I've got, my photo of myself at age nine is, you know, it's, it's my hero photo of myself, my photo of me as the kid who survived a whole bunch of stuff playing in the snow. That hero photo is a photo of me playing in the snow. And there I was today building a snowman and probably haven't built a snowman since I was about that age. So it's bringing spontane spontaneity and joy into my life because I've put a structure in place. So, you know, in the text below the video, I've actually written out my rough structure for my week, my rough structure for my day. Hopefully, that'll give you some ideas around things that you might be able to tweak in your day or in your week to give you a little bit of a sense of what's doable, a little bit of a sense of maybe there's something that you can tweak to make your week work better for you. We've all got so much going on and it can be so exhausting and so stressful and so isolating and we burn the candle at both ends. So we're stressing all day long, we're not going to bed early enough at night, we're not eating properly, we're not exercising enough, we are our own worst enemies. Don't worry, I am the captain of the worst own worst enemy club. But I'm making changes. Now the changes that I'm making I'm hoping are sustainable for me and I'll keep you posted, you'll be bound to know if it doesn't work out. But I tell you what, here's one thing I've noticed. My stress levels have dropped significantly since having this little bit of extra structure to support the spontaneity and flexibility that I want. Not only that, since we've moved to home education, my whole family's stress levels have dropped significantly because we are now much more responsive to the needs of my children and that's working really nicely within the structure that I've got in place for us as a family but also for me as a business owner. My model won't necessarily work for you. Not everyone needs to home educate their children. Not everybody has so many balls in the air that they need to start their day at, you know, six o'clock. But get thinking. 
get thinking about what you can tweak. Get thinking about what's in the way of you not packing more in. It's not about doing more. It's about feeling organized, feeling structured, feeling like you know what's coming next so that you can get on with your day and there's room for flexibility and freedom because that's what drew us all into our own businesses, right? Quick note on the side, don't forget Fire Starters, my 30-day program, and No Quarter, my 90-day program, kick off their next rounds in the first week of October. So jump in quickly. There's only a small number of places for each of those programs. I keep all of my mentoring programs quite tight. So jump in with a message and I can help you build some structure into your working life as well. Have a fabulous evening. Get some sleep. Do something different tomorrow that's going to set you off on the right foot for the rest of this week. Take care.